Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Runcam Split 4 FPV slash HD recording camera. In this video, I'm going to quickly go over its features and specs, measure its analog latency, and show you some HD flight footage that was captured using this camera. In addition, as I mentioned in my recent review of the Calix Loris, in the next few days I'm going to upload a side-by-side -side comparison of these new nano-sized 4K split-style HD cameras. First of all, inside this box, along with the Runcam Split 4 camera, you are getting a nano to micro sized camera adapter, a bag with M2 standoffs, nuts and screws, and a 4cm long 1.25mm male JST connector, which I've already soldered to the DVR board. In terms of features and specs, the Runcam Split 4 is based on a nano sized camera unit, which is connected using a 7cm long coaxial cable to a DVR board that will enable you to capture up to 4K 30 frames per second videos to a micro SD card. The supported DC input voltage of the board is between 5 to 20 volts. It features an onboard microphone. It supports up to 128GB micro SD cards. Even if you are not going to press the start slash stop recording button while the camera is recording and power it off, the video is still going to be saved to the micro SD card. And using these RX and TX pads, you'll be able to connect it to your flight controller and assign an auxiliary switch that will start and stop recording videos. In addition, the video recording options are 4K at 30 frames per second, 2.7K at 60 frames per second, and 1080p 60 frames per second. As for the camera unit, it has some protection on its back, its field of view is 140 degrees, and the native aspect ratio of the CMOS sensor is 4x3. The Runcam Split 4 weighs 10.2 grams, so it is lighter than the Split 3 Nano, and also than the Codex Loris. Unlike the DVR board that was in use by the recent Split cameras, which features 20x20mm mounting holes, the DVR board of the Split 4 is using 25x25mm whoop style mounting holes. The dimensions of the camera unit are 14x13.8x20.9mm, and the outer dimensions of the DVR board are 28.6x28.6x3.6mm. Setting up the camera is done using the two buttons which are located on the sides of the DVR board. Short pressing this one is going to either start or stop recording, long pressing it when the camera is on is going to turn off the camera, and short pressing it while the camera is off is going to turn it on. Long pressing the second one is going to open up the configuration menu, then you can navigate through the different options by short pressing the start or stop recording button, and you can enter or change an option by short pressing the second button. First under video, you can set the recording resolution to one of the following options. You can set loop recording, which is by default set to off, to either 1, 3, or 5 minutes. So if you are going to choose to use this option, a new file is going to be created every 1, 3, or 5 minutes. Next, you can set the auto recording, which is by default set to on, to off. If it's going to be set to on, once the camera is going to be powered up, the video is going to stop recording using the last settings. Under image, you can set the saturation, contrast, brightness, sharpness, and exposure. You can manually set the ISO, which is by default set to auto. You can also adjust the shutter speed, flip the image, and adjust the metering. Under TV out, you can set the aspect ratio to 4x3, which is the default option, or 16x9. And you can set the TV mode to either NTSC, which is the default option, or PAL. You should note that these settings are not going to affect the digital recording. Under micro SD card, you'll be able to see the information of the card and format it. And finally, under general, you can set the power frequency to either 50 or 60 Hz according to your country. You can set the recording volume. Set auto power up to on, which is the default option, or you can turn it off. You can set the auto shutdown option, which is by default set to off, to 1 or 3 minutes, so the camera is going to automatically shut down after 1 or 3 minutes. You can restore the camera to its default settings. And you can set the language to either English or Chinese. In addition, when the camera is recording, on the top right corner of the screen, you'll be able to see a recording indicator, and when it's not recording, you'll be able to monitor the video resolution settings. In order to measure the latency of the camera, I used my usual method of recording the screen of the FetchArc HDO2 at 240 frames per second, and according to my test, the latency of the camera, both when it was set to NTSC and PAL, and both when it was recording and not recording, is about 45 milliseconds, which is what you would normally expect from this type of split style cameras. The next thing that I've done is to mount the Runcam Split 4 on the Ishin Lal 3, which has its issues but still is a good platform for testing these type of cameras because it features 25 by 25 mm mounting holes, and I'm going to wrap up this video with some flight footage. 
I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video, and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Stay tuned for the upcoming side-by-side -side comparison of the Split 4 and the Loris, and also with other 4K cameras, and I will see you soon on my next videos. Goodbye. No sound I'll find that